The graphics card is easily the most important piece of hardware in any gaming PC. But if you're building a new gaming rig from scratch, things can get quite challenging when the time comes for you to buy the actual GPU. And the reason for this mostly boils down to an overabundance of choice. Especially once you start encountering terms like dedicated, integrated, and even discrete graphics cards. That is why in this video we'll be breaking down all the differences between these types of graphics cards. We'll also be giving examples of when each of these types of graphics cards is best used so that you may budget your PC more adequately. So without any further ado, let's begin. We'll start off with the dedicated graphics cards. This is the piece of hardware you're probably imagining when you think of a graphics card. It's got its own fans, it connects to the motherboard, it has connectors for the monitor, and it probably looks awesome if it's a gaming graphics card. It even has its own cooling system, since dedicated graphics cards have high power requirements. This graphics card has its own inbuilt memory called VRAM that it uses for graphics rendering. What this means is that if you've got a graphics card with 6GB of VRAM on a system with 16GB of regular RAM, the graphics card will only use the VRAM, leaving more system RAM for the CPU. There's a link in the description to a whole video where we just talk about VRAM, so check it out if you're interested. But for now, all you need to know is that VRAM is the inbuilt RAM the dedicated graphics cards use. Nvidia and AMD are the only two relevant players in the GPU market, however, plenty of manufacturers like MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, EVGA, and so forth make actual graphics cards using these GPUs. If you want to know what the difference between a GPU and a graphics card is, check out the link in the description for our video where we discuss the differences between GPUs, CPUs, and APUs. As for discrete graphics cards, these are basically just dedicated graphics cards for laptops, so they hold no relevance for desktop PC users. Now, an integrated graphics card is essentially the exact opposite of a dedicated one. It's inbuilt into the motherboard or processor. So a PC that has integrated graphics doesn't need a dedicated graphics card in order to show stuff on the screen. One important thing to note is that integrated graphics cards don't have their own VRAM. Instead, they have to rely on system RAM. This means that the 8GB of system RAM on a PC that uses integrated graphics will be spread much thinner than if there were also a dedicated graphics card somewhere in that equation. Since now both the CPU and the integrated graphics card will have to fight over the same pool of RAM. Also, for all intents and purposes, you can think of AMD's APUs as CPUs with integrated graphics. There are some technical differences between the two, but these don't really matter to us as users. However, if you're a gamer who has to settle for integrated graphics, you'll definitely want to get a Ryzen APU. No integrated graphics can measure up to the dedicated graphics cards, but AMD has certainly come closer than Intel. And now we come to the meat and potatoes of this whole discussion. Which one should you choose? We've already established that dedicated graphics cards perform better than integrated ones, but there certainly are cases where it's better to opt for integrated graphics. For example, integrated graphics consume far less power, so if you're a laptop user who values a long battery life, you should seriously consider getting a laptop with integrated graphics over one with a discrete graphics card. And just because they aren't as good for gaming doesn't mean that integrated graphics can't run games smoothly. This goes for both laptops and desktop PCs. It just depends on what games you'll be playing and in what resolution. If you just want to run older games or don't mind games on medium or low graphics, possibly at a resolution lower than 1080p, integrated graphics have got you covered. Esports also run particularly well on integrated graphics, and honestly, with how small most laptop displays are, this isn't as big a deal as it would be on a 24-inch monitor. Finally, if you're not into gaming at all and just need your PC for some light browsing, word processing, Netflix streaming, and the occasional dive down one of the many YouTube rabbit holes, then you don't need a dedicated graphics card. Getting one would be the equivalent of getting a Lamborghini just to make your daily high-traffic 15-minute commute to work. 
And we aren't even kidding. Intel's latest generation of HD graphics works just fine even at 4K Ultra HD resolutions. Just not for gaming. What's more, if you're considering buying a dedicated graphics card because your PC feels sluggish but you don't play video games, then you probably just need more RAM. Adding another RAM module should considerably reinvigorate your PC, and it'll end up being way cheaper. Now don't get us wrong, we love dedicated graphics cards as much as the next gamer, but with how expensive they are, it would be a shame for you to buy one and then not end up using it to its full potential or even half of it. So if we've just described your needs as a PC user, there's no need to bother with a dedicated graphics card. Not only will they be an overkill in terms of wasted potential, but they'll also make your wallet very, very sad. And when your wallet is sad, you're probably sad as well. Why would you want to do that to yourself? On the other hand, if you're looking to run the latest AAA titles in 6290fps, or higher resolutions even, then a dedicated graphics card is a must. And the same goes for editing and graphics design software. A dedicated graphics card can handle the processing power of 3D rendering, Photoshop, multiple monitor setups, you name it. Just remember that an upgrade to a dedicated graphics card will also mean you probably have to upgrade your PSU as well. Dedicated graphics cards need a lot of power. And of course, we mustn't forget all the bragging rights that you will be entitled to if you own a powerful dedicated graphics card. Just be aware that the arms race where bragging rights are the common currency are generally not worth partaking in since a good last-gen graphics card will generally not be made obsolete when the new-gen GPUs find their way to hardware store shelves. And that about does it for this video. So, to summarize, integrated graphics cards are built into the CPU or motherboard. Dedicated graphics cards are a wholly separate piece of hardware, and discrete graphics cards are basically just dedicated graphics cards for laptops. Dedicated cards perform way better, but they also require more power to run and more money to buy. So we recommend integrated graphics cards for the most casual users and non-gamers. In any case, we hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, you can help us out by liking it and subscribing to our channel. And if you've got friends who could benefit from watching it, help them out by sharing this video either directly or on social media. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to click on the bell icon so that you don't accidentally miss them. We upload new videos regularly, so keep your eyes peeled for the next one. In the meantime, mirror games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.